back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I can't believe it, it is already April, which means it's time for my March wrap up. I did have a pretty successful reading month in March. I managed to read 16 books which I'm very happy with so I'm gonna whiz through those and tell you what I thought of each. I have done reviews for some of them and the rest of them will have reviews coming very soon. Also I just surpassed 7,000 subscribers which is mind-boggling and I'm gonna do something in celebration. I haven't really decided quite what but something. So if you have ideas for that, um, let me know in the comments what you would like me to do, if there's video ideas or something like that. I would love to have your input, so do let me know, and just thank you. <laughs> um, it never ceases to amaze me how incredibly supportive so many of you are on all of my videos, and it's just in crazy. It's in crazy. Incredibly crazy. <laughs> I don't know, it's amazing, but I am so entirely thankful and grateful and I love YouTube, I wouldn't do it otherwise, so thank you so much and let's get into all the books I managed to read in March. So I'm going to go from lowest rated to highest rated and I'll tell you a little bit about each of the highest rated ones because they are my favourites, but as I say reviews will be coming for all of these. The first one I have to talk about got one star from me which is not great. Um, it is called Oversea Under Stone and it's by Susan Cooper. I read this with Elizabeth and Chelsea and none of us really were big fans of it but I particularly disliked it. It's a kids book written in the 60s that we read as part of the Magical Space Pussycats podcast so the next episode of that will have us discussing this. Yeah, it just, it really did not do anything for me and it was very bad. Like it was a bad story and a bad product of its time. I've done a review on this one, I'll link it if you want to go and find out more, but I gave it one star. I would not recommend that one. The next one I read was on audiobook, so I listened to this and it is The Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle, which is the first book in the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan. I read this because I needed to as part of Booktube SFF, so yeah, I wasn't a fan of this. <laughs> it really just didn't work for me. I think the humour was not my thing at all and I just hated the characters and did not enjoy the storyline and it just it didn't work for me at all so I gave this a 1.5 because I'd given a one star to Oversee Understone and I think there were some really problematic things in that book. I don't think there's problematic things in this book, I just think it wasn't for me. So I've given it a 1.5, it's not terrible writing, it's just not for me. This Savage Song, which is by V.E. Schwab. I read this as part of Booktube SFF as well. And again, I wasn't a huge fan of this one. I didn't really expect to be a big fan of it because I'm not a big V.E. Schwab fan generally. Um, most of the books I've read by her I just haven't enjoyed or I found lacking as the story continues. Um, I find the ideas good, but I don't find the story good. This was okay. I gave it two stars. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't really my thing either. Another one that got two stars from me is Spaceman of Bohemia which is by Yaroslav Kalfar who is a Czech author. This one again just really wasn't what I expected and wasn't really my kind of style of sci-fi. It was way more literary than it was sci-fi and I didn't really enjoy the ending or the second half of this that much so I gave it a two out of five stars. It's not awful but it's not great. The next one I read is the first one in the Magnus Chase series. It's called The Sword of Summer and I read this one because the second one in this series has been nominated for Booktube SFF although I haven't read that one yet. This one I liked a lot more than I liked Trials of Apollo but it still wasn't really my kind of humour. I just didn't really enjoy the plot and the humour as much as I wanted to. I think there's some really interesting moments in this and I think the representation in this book is really good because we have lots of characters who are different from the normal fantasy characters you might see and we have things like ASL being used which is great and I really enjoyed those elements. I also enjoyed learning about the gods themselves but the plot and the characters were a bit weak for me and the humour just isn't my thing. So I gave this one a 2.5 
And now we get on to the books that I actually somewhat liked, which is good. Um, the first one is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. I was not necessarily surprised by this one because I kind of like her books as a mediocre level most of the time. Um, and this one got a three stars from me, so it was definitely a step up from some of the ones in the Throne of Glass series, but it really wasn't that impressive overall. I liked the concepts that she was building in here, but I got very frustrated with the main character. However, I then went on to the second book in the series later in the month and I really enjoyed that, so I'll tell you about that when I get there. But this one got three stars. The next book I gave three stars is Without a Summer, which is by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is the third book in the Glamorous History series and it's a sort of fantasy of manners, light-hearted, fun series of books, which I do definitely enjoy and this one was no exception to that. I still really enjoy the two main characters and I think this one built a lot on the previous stories but it did feel a little bit like a filler book to me so I gave it three. And then I moved on to the fourth one in the series which is Valor and Vanity and this one got a slightly higher rating of 3.5 because I felt this was a bit more developed overall. Also managing to get a 3.5 is Brothers Ruin by Emma Newman. This is the first one in a little novella series she's writing and I definitely enjoyed this although I do feel like it's very much a setup book. It does not have an awful lot of plot. It's very much setting up for later books in the series which is not a bad thing but don't go into it expecting an entire story, go into it expecting the beginning of what promises to be a good story. So 3.5 for this one. Also coming in at 3.5 stars is Furthermore by Tahara Maki, which surprised me slightly because there were moments that were quite irritating in this, but overall I enjoyed it, it was fun, it was light, it was easy to get through, and the story was enjoyable enough. So I gave it a 3.5. And now onto the books I really enjoyed. So Abaddon's Gate by James S.A. Corey is the third book in the Expanse series. I read this with James, whose channel I'll link below, and we had a great time discussing it, and I really enjoyed this to the point where I think it might be my favourite one in the series. So I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was definitely a solid continuation, didn't feel like filler, it felt like its own story completely and I really enjoyed the new characters and the combination of them with our older characters that we already knew, so definitely would recommend the Expanse series as a whole. The next book I read is Paladin of Souls, which is by Lewis McMaster Bejeweled. This is the second book in her fantasy series after Curse of Chalion, and I really enjoyed this. It follows a different character from those within the first book, and it's set in the same world, and it follows a very different adventure, so it's kind of only loosely tied together, but I just felt like it was fantastic. I love the main character. She's called Ista. She's like 40 years old. She's been thought of as mad for a lot of her life. Many people have judged her and misjudged her and she's just really bitter and great and I love her as a character and I love the story. It's a slow burn with a lot of um, Lewis McMaster Bejeweled's fantasy. It seems like quite a slow burn but I never felt bored. I always felt into the story. I was always just captivated and I love that about her world and her characters. So I really enjoyed this and I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Another one I really, really enjoyed is Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castel. I should have read this ages ago. I've actually met the author at previous events and he's lovely, so I don't know why I didn't pick this up earlier, but I finally did this month and it started me on a train of reading many in the series. I have already read the second one as well and I loved that and I'm going to be reading the third one very, very soon. But yeah, I loved this. <laughs> it was so much fun. It's a sword and sorcery through and through. It's got great characters, great plot, great twists and turns and adventure. And it's just kind of everything I love in a sword and sorcery kind of fantasy. So if you like anything like Scott Lynch and Michael J. Sullivan, any of those types of authors, I think you would definitely really enjoy this and it's well worth checking out. I gave the first one a 4.5. Another book that really surprised me but managed to swoop in with a 4.5 from me is A Court of Mist and Fury which is by Sarah J Mass and is the second book in this series. I honestly was so astounded that this managed to turn things around so drastically for me. I didn't necessarily dislike the first book in the series but it felt very samey to a lot of other fantasy books and a lot of her previous writing and yet this one completely turned things around and made such a different kind of story um, from what she had built in the first book. The characters massively progressed, the story became 
really exciting and I just enjoyed this so so much more. There are still a few problems but generally I am so excited for the final book in the series and I've actually pre-ordered it, that's how excited I am because there is a huge cliffhanger in this book and it is not fair so I'm very excited that the next book comes out really soon and I gave this a 4.5. Next up I read Dawn of Wonder which is a self-published but absolutely amazing book by Jonathan Renshaw. This is truly epic fantasy in the same sort of style as Sanderson, Martin, Rothfuss, any of those big name authors. If you like them you're probably gonna like this, Robert Jordan, just any of them but I really really enjoyed this it has a huge amount going on in the story and I have done a full review of this one so I'll link that if you want to see what I've said about it but honestly I really really enjoyed this and I've been having quite a lot of luck recently with reading fantastic self-published epic fantasy books because I'm about to finish another one which is by a different author entirely that is also self-published fantasy and amazing so a bit on a roll and I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Which means the final book that I managed to finish in the month of March is this one, Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castell, the second one in this series, the Great Coat series, and this was utterly perfect in my mind. I just I really enjoyed it. I had so much fun reading it. I just adored the way that the characters developed, the plot developed, everything got way more epic and fun and it's just fantastic. So I ended up giving this five stars. I will be reviewing probably the first three, maybe the first four in the series. Depends how quickly I get to them because the fourth book comes out fairly soon. If you do like Sword and Sorcery, I think this series is one you need to check out. I should have read it earlier, but I'm really glad I now have because I loved it and I'm fully on board with The Great Coats. So that is everything I managed to read in the month of March. I was very happy with my reading overall. I enjoyed a lot of the ones I chose for myself. I did not necessarily enjoy all of the booktube SFF ones, but I'm hopeful that maybe the ones I read next month might be better. Again, thank you all so much for getting me past 7,000 subscribers. That is honestly insane, but absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to just keep doing more. Let me know if you have ideas for things you want to see. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.